Hey guys, I uh, just went down to a Kia bar and got myself the cheapest four port USB hub I could find. Um, it's for an upcoming project which I'll do another video on, but I thought I'd show you guys what's inside. The cheapest USB hub I've ever seen. I paid 380 yen for this. You can see here, 380 yen. That's about four dollars or so. Um, four port USB 2 high speed hub. There's no branding on this thing, it's made in China. Um, and it's pretty much what you'd expect inside, but there's a few interesting details that they've done to cut costs in here. So um, I thought I'd show you that and uh, give you a brief rundown of what they can do to save every single cent on manufacturing a product like this. So basically what it is, you got your connector here, goes into your computer, you got your power input here, 5 volts in. And then just you can switch on and off with an LED to show you which one is turned on and off. Pretty basic, that's all it does. The plastic for starters is a little bit translucent looking like you get with the really cheap plastics. Um, there's no branding on this either, it just says four ports, USB 2, high speed hub. Nothing special. So let's pull this thing apart and um, we'll have a look inside. Now it should just pull apart if I can get my fingernails in. Alrighty, so it's not even glued, you know, because that costs money. It's just the uh, the posts that come through this PCB just fit into the friction fit into these holes in these standoffs. Nothing special at all. And then we just lift out. So we got a total of three moulded parts. That's a more translucent plastic. This is still a little bit translucent, but this is the uh, the part where the LEDs shine through. Put those down there. That's all there is to say about that. And then here we've got the PCB. So basically, there's not much going on really, but there's a few little interesting things. So we've got a chip on board, focus, we've got our chip on board, basically what they do is rather than spending the extra few cents on soldering a surface mount or a through hole chip onto the board, they put the die directly on the chip and then do the jumper wires from the, uh, the silicon to the PCB and they just drop a blob of epoxy on top. It's pretty much the same epoxy you'll get on the package if you put a proper surface mount package on there, or a dip package. But that way, you're saving the money on, you know, the metal legs and producing a, uh, a package. So, that's very common on cheap electronics. It's not cheaper if you only do a few runs, like a few thousand items in a run, but if you're doing 20, 50,000 or more, 100,000 items, this ends up being cheaper. Alright, so the next thing, this here, this is what gives a clock signal to the uh, to the chip but it's not a crystal it's actually a ceramic resonator and they're a lot cheaper but they're not so accurate see a ceramic resonator is only about a 0.5 percent accuracy to the rating this one's a six megahertz maybe we can get a closer shot six megahertz um, whereas if that was a proper quartz crystal like the metal oval can that you usually see that will be accurate to about 0.001%. But for this application, we probably don't need that accuracy. And we're not doing any timing applications, it's just USB, basic USB. So, saving some cost there. Then on the back here, you can see these black traces. One, two, three, four, and then there's a fifth one here. If we turn that over, we've got four LEDs. What they've actually done is they've printed carbon traces, like jumper wires, onto the PCB to act as resistors. There's no resistors for the, the voltage to the uh, LED, because they can't run on just 5 volts straight. They'll burn out. So they're actually acting as a resistor, just a carbon trace. So, yeah, saving, um, saving costs on pick and placing resistors. You probably save a few cents per board, and that all adds up. This one here is interesting, they've still got this here because they've decided that they're not going to put an LED here. This one, which sits here on the corner, that would be a general power on LED to show that this is plugged in and yep, you've got power. 
it corresponds with this little hole just here but they haven't actually populated that instead they just got the four so you can turn it on and off and you're going to see if there's power there anyway apart from that there's not really much else to say uh, four switches four USB ports I see that these must have been hand soldered as well because if that was wave soldered every point would be soldered there but they haven't soldered the strain relief which is a little bit dodgy because it means I can wiggle that that's no good so before I use this in my next project I'm going to actually solder those strain reliefs those clips so then that will make these a lot more solid but yeah pretty simple but I've plugged it in and it actually does work so yeah that's pretty much the bargain basement bottom end of USB hubs but for what I'm going to use it for it'll be fine but what am I using it for I haven't said that yet have I well hang around and I'll show you what I'm doing with it in a video I'll post up soon. Oh yeah, there we go. The, possibly, maybe, the world's cheapest 4-port USB hub. And it certainly looks it.